I, I almost feel like a lot of you are going to start to really know who your friends are, okay? You're a very, very, um, I, I don't want to say like sociable because you're not, but it's more like you're a very patient sign. You take people at face value. And uh, I feel like what people see is what they pretty much get with you. You don't really hide things. You don't really try to um, misrepresent yourself, okay? So I do feel that in the same way, you see people and you take people at face value, okay? And I do feel that as a result of it, this is there's some major life-changing events I keep seeing coming through. And it denotes to me like you might be in a position where there is some type of a celebration. There's some type of a get-together, some type of a celebration where you are kind of like put on the spotlight. And I feel like that's when people will re reveal their true colors, okay? So it's sort of like, you know, in my time of need, where were you? Versus now, when I'm in a position of power, of status, of authority, when the spotlight is, sh is shown on me, now you want to be around. So I feel like some um, people will reveal their true colors, when um, you are thrust into a position of power and they might bend over backwards in order to appease you or in order to get you to notice them in a way. So I definitely feel that because of it, um, important truths about people will be coming through for this month. I believe this one came out like this. I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, important truths are coming to light for this month and I do sense that it is going to be very very important for you to know that you know the the, the true choices the true options the true friends are going to be around and I do feel there's somebody around you that might be a little bit cunning and you have inkling of this your intuition is telling you basically um, be careful about this person you don't want to divulge too much much secrets they might be an instigator is what I'm feeling they might be um, adding fuel to a fire in some type of a long-standing situation where there's gossip, there's rumors, there's hostilities involved. Okay, They might be doing it very covertly behind the scenes. And I do see their efforts are going to be thwarted and you're going to be, they're not going to be able to sabotage anything that you're doing. So don't worry about it. Okay. What I'm also feeling as well is, um, okay, so... I'm going to use this one, the first three. So what I'm feeling as well is whatever people try to do to you, um, they're, they're not going to be successful, but it's really important for you to, to know that this is a very, very transformative month, I feel, for a lot of you. And depending on how the situation goes, it can't. It, I feel that it's going to end on a very, very high note, okay? It's going to end well, and it's a situation at least. You're getting a lot of information. You're getting a lot of clarity as to people's true intentions, as to who your friends are, as to who you can trust. So overall, it's basically a very, very uh, revealing month, but I do feel... Um, emotionally, it could be very, very high and a little bit of a low slump when the information comes to light, but it's going to end on a high note, okay? So just keep that in mind, and whatever slump you are getting through for this month, I do hope that it's going to be very temporary, because I do feel starting off, there's a lot of kinetic energy, a lot of momentum, and it's going to end very well, all right? So let's go into your reading. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that I'm picking up before we start the cards okay I'm gonna go into this because I, I definitely feel you are getting some guidance here you're you're getting something coming through via you know somebody that has passed on so like um, some medium energies coming through okay so let me just talk about this so first of all we do have a situation here it denotes like an empty victory, okay? The Five of Swords usually indicates some type of a conflict, usually of a verbal nature, in which um, you end up in a uh, in a no-win situation, okay? One person is gaining at the expense of the other two. So overall, it is a, a, a victory on your end that might be harmful to other people. It's an air energy and it's linked up here with the queen of swords so i definitely feel you know there is a situation here possibly with an air sign aquarius gemini and libra their sun moon or their rising and they come off as someone who's very strict very stern very cold and very like dis disenchanted with life
life, okay? So you might be dealing with somebody like this where you feel like, um, I do sense a little bit of envy coming through from, not so much from this particular card, but from the combination of the cards that are falling out. You might have achieved a victory, um, a victory of your own doing, or a victory where you are kind of like thrust in the spotlight. And I do sense there's some type of skepticism coming through from this uh, person. They might be acting out of jealousy. They might be acting out of resentment. Or they might feel as if they might question your authority, okay? So if this is coming through as a work a colleague, a supervisor especially, just know that it is in their nature to be very, very inquisitive. It is in their nature to also like uh, have their guard up a lot all the time. They seem as if they're defensive, but that's just the nature of the air sign. So, you know, try to work collaboratively and cooperatively with this person because I do feel they come with a lot of ideas, a lot of expertise. They might seem a little bit cold, a little bit cutthroat, but I do feel that they... Um, if you're working, collaborating with them in any way, the manners in which you both conduct yourselves are very different. So it's going to require a lot of maneuvering, a lot of readjustment, and a lot of adjustment in order to work with this person, okay? For others of you who might be going through some type of battle with this person, this can be, you know, like a long-standing dispute, some type of long-standing type of situation where there might be dispute over resources, over finances, over land, over property, which might lead me to believe this could be a spouse, uh, a former spouse for a lot of you. I And this could be male or female. And I feel like there is a, a self-serving energy associated with this. So be a little bit mindful. And um, I do feel this person is a little bit cunning. Be mindful, stay ahead of the game, because I do sense that they are, they they have some wise counsel on their side that's going to be able to either drag on the situation or get a result in which they are very cutthroat about how they proceed with it, okay? So this serves as a little bit of a warning if you have been dealing with this situation within the past few months or dealing with a person like this for the past few months. I do feel that it's going to take like, uh, um, I, I wouldn't say like, um, I wouldn't say like sweet talk, but I do feel that it does take like a lot of sincerity and a lot of like coming to terms with a situation or at least, you know, um, expressing yourself in a very, very sincere, in a very open-minded, open-hearted manner in order to win this person over, okay? So if you're a contractor, for example, and this is one of your potential clients and you really want to win them over, come to them, approach them with facts, solid facts, because they are very rational. They don't, you can't do an emotional appeal to them and expect them to invest, for example. However, you can project yourself in a way where you are emotionally appealing, where you are very sincere, very honest, very open, and you speak from the heart. I do sense that's going to be able to breach their defenses, okay? So that's what I feel coming through. Um, on the other hand, I feel like when it comes to communication overall, it is very, very important for you to um, if someone if you feel like someone has has tried to walk out in the past okay if someone has like been very very self-serving in the past particularly an air sign Aquarius Gemini and Libra it is really important to draw boundaries with this person say what you need to say and leave things alone okay so there's no need to reiterate there's no need to like reassess there's no need to draw these gray areas so be very concise very succinct with your communication in order to get your point across because i feel like they're looking for a verbal challenge and you might not be well equipped to deal with this energy okay so if it's a bothersome energy just know that say your piece and let it go all right say your piece and let it go now, in terms of, um, I feel like this is more emotional, mental health, physical health as well. In terms of your health and your well-being, we do have the Ten of Swords and the Strength card. For some reason, I'm feeling a lot of like overexertion with, with a lot of you mentally as well. There's a lot of anxieties, nervousness, um, worrying, worrying, a lot of excessive worrying. So this is, you know, the Ten of Swords also indicates like potentially people recuperating after a surgery, after an illness, or, you know, just recuperating because they're under the weather. 
Um, what I feel is in this card, linked up with the strength card, it basically indicates a situation where either there's a lot of mental energy affecting your physical health. So mental health affecting physical health. So for example, if you are in an environment where you know work is very stressful, you would find yourself getting sick a lot more and also needing a lot more time to recuperate from the illnesses, okay? So exercise your mental health and try to restore your mental health in a way where you can calm down that nervous so it's really important not to dwell on the uh, negativity from other people and at least, you know, don't let their words cut you to the point where you're afraid to interact with them. You're like treading on eggshells. Just be very mindful about that. Don't let the negativity affect your physical well-being, okay? What I'm also feeling here is um, linking up with the strength card. I feel like the strength card is a situation where both of these cards appearing in conjunction with one another. It's sort of like, um, you know, like Taurus, you, you are a sign that is very, very patient, okay? You're very, very patient with people. You're very patient about, and you're very understanding about people's circumstances, okay? And you don't get mad very easily, but when you do get pushed over the edge, you tend to be explosive. But you, you would say what you need to say, and then you you know, you forgive very easily. So once, it, it takes a lot to push you to that point, but once it gets to that point, you might state very, very matter-of-factly how you feel about someone. If they're pushing for it, if you're, they're pushing your buttons, and if they're doing this continuously, I do feel that you are in a position where you are going to give them a piece of your mind. And when that happens, the truth can be very, very hurtful, can, can really cut, can really, um, really hurt somebody's self-esteem. And I don't feel this energy is coming through from your end. I do feel like a lot of you know this about yourself and you try your best to curb it, okay? And you try your best not to, to address problems as they creep up rather than waiting into that moment of, um, tension, conflict, building up, and then you start to, you know, overwhelm yourself and become overwhelmed as a result. I do feel that this, both of these cards together indicates to me that sometimes the truth that we are digging for, that we are trying so hard to, to bring to the surface, that we are so, trying so hard to unveil or uncover, sometimes it can be very, very hurtful. So if you're out there digging for answers, just be prepared that the answers will come. But it might be, you know, sometimes like you, you might find out a little bit too much information and you might realize, I wish I hadn't known, okay? So I feel there's something like that that's coming through. And I do feel it potentially coming through from someone who is, that, that is quite close to you. And as a result, it might leave you in a little bit of a daze, like, now that I have the information I've been looking for for so long, what do I do with it? How do I move forward? So I definitely feel this is a situation where you are, if, you, you, if you're out there digging for information, I do feel some information coming to light. I feel a lot of, um, a lot of information coming through regarding somebody's misdeeds is coming up for a re-examination. And just know that if you're out there digging, I do feel you're going to find the answers that you need. But... It's not really about the, the what's coming up. It's not about the information that's being revealed. It's more about, you know, while well, you were asking for it, now what are you going to do given the information? And I do sense one of the main things that's coming through is that once the cat's out of the bag, you know, speaking, and I feel for a lot of you, this might be on the work front, where you find out somebody is doing something kind of shady or kind of like... Um, covertly behind the scenes and you're like stumbling upon this information i feel that it's it's basically asking you you know you you got what you asked for and it's really important for you to forge ahead in a way where you know once you tell yourself okay if i have this information if i i just want to know and once you already know stick through with whatever your initial intention is okay so we have here the seven of pentacles and the emperor and I feel that the emperor, once again, coming through, and I feel like this is a very, what I mean earlier, when I said you, you do have some, some, um, 
spirits coming through that is trying to guide the reading or that's trying to steer you in a specific direction. So I feel like a lot of you might have, might, for example, you might be negotiating for a pay raise and you realize the company, you know, whoever the, the upper management, the supervisor is, they might tell you we're not capable of giving you this raise because we simply don't have the money. Or they might tell you, well, we can't give you a raise realistically, mainly because your supervisor said these are the areas that you need to work on. So I feel there's a process here where you're trying to find out something and I feel like the truth comes to light and you realize that, okay, well, what do I do now? You know, it's one of those things where you might find out the company might not be able to give you a raise because they haven't got the extra funds and they might be serious about it. Or you might find out that, oh, my supervisor thinks this about me and you might, you know, get that copy of your performance review when you're looking for an opportunity for a raise and you might realize well, these are the areas I need to work on. And you might take offense to that. So I feel like it could be a double-edged sword in which, you know, you're finding out the information. But what you do with the information, that's the hard part, okay? And I feel it's being echoed in these two cards as well. And I feel like it's more on the work situation, on the finance situation as well, all right? Um, a lot of you might be feeling as if, if you've got like a very dear supervisor or some upper management person in your work environment that you really look up to, that you, you work really well under, that you, you know, really care for and you just, um, you just really, you know, you revere them, you look up to them. I feel like they might be leaving your work environment, okay? So they might be retiring, they might be recruited for another company. And you feel that the work environment is going to be chaotic once they leave because they're like the, the, the glue that held everything together. So I definitely feel some, some like strong figure is leaving your work environment. And as a result of it, you don't know what you want to do right now because you can't really imagine the workplace running smoothly as a result of them leaving. So I definitely feel like a, a whole thing about, you know, a passage someone is like due for somewhere else, there might be like a going away party coming through for this person. And there might be a lot of information that comes through at this going away party as well. So if this sounds like it's uh, resonating with you, I feel like some, a lot of information coming through as a result of this going away situation. Okay. You might know, you might also, um, find out why they're leaving if it's not retirement if it's not just for another job you might find out that they they don't have overall a positive view of the current company or the current work situation and they might you know um, try to cut their losses by shifting into something else and I feel like it leaves you in a space where you are at a crossroads you don't know what to do and you don't know um, if you should take their word because it seems to me like you trust this person. You don't know if you should take their word or if you should continue to stick it out where you are. Okay. So what's coming through is I feel for a lot of you, if you are in that situation, okay, I do sense the universe is supporting you to move on to a new location, to move on to something new, to move on to a new venture or the next phase of your life. So it's basically telling you here with the King of Pentacles and the Prince of Swords, this is like branching off. This is like going off somewhere into a new environment. Okay. This is also communication news coming through via a, um, an authority figure in your work environment. And it's also a situation where you're getting possibly being headhunted for another position or someone is coming through to give you a lot of insights, a lot of clarity and a lot of stability where you currently are. So if you find yourself, you know, information coming to light, it might really ch drastically change the direction of your life. I see a lot of, um, you know, because you're an earth sign, usually when I, I do readings for earth sign, I feel a lot of stability, especially with Virgos. The, the Virgo readings are usually very easy to get through. But I definitely feel for this month, and you're also an earth sign, I feel like everything is very much up in the air and, and the up in the air energy is as a result of another person, like a lot of information coming through. And then you're going to have, it's kind of like destabilizing information that's go, going to make you re-examine what do I know? What do I need to do? So it's more about, you know, 
it's not so much about the information, but it's more like, what do I do now? So I feel like that energy coming through. So I feel that there is going to be other job opportunities out there for those of you who are looking. I definitely feel there is something lucrative coming through as well. And I do see communication coming through from potentially a, a, a new employer or a new job opportunity, a new uh, person that is headhunting you for a specific position, okay? What I'm also sensing as well is there is going to be communication f coming in f for you from an earth sign, so another Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And I definitely feel this is something very, very solid where you are both going to be able to build something together. So in whatever capacity this is coming through, I do feel that it's going to be in your best interest to look at this situation. And if you are somewhat involved in whatever capacity with an, another earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising, it's basically saying here, the, the person, it seems to me, is very solid, but I definitely feel it's saying here, have a plan B. So whatever you're planning, it says to have a plan B, okay? Things coming to light or it news, new things that will really shake your foundation. I do feel it is affecting another earth sign in your midst. And it's really important to be vigilant and to have like a plan B. That's what they're saying. It's not good or bad, but I, I definitely feel like it's just important overall in life, okay? Now, in terms of your advice, Taurus, we have the Tower, the Three of Pentacles, and the Ace of Cups. So I'm going to talk about this first because I feel like this card is coming out very, very strongly. And it's basically the reassurance card, okay? I feel for a lot of you, um, there might be some challenges coming through for this month. And a lot of it has to do with um, people in your periphery. So this that's uh, when I say people in your periphery, it could mean acquaintances, okay? Not so much the people that you are very emotionally rooted in. So family members, significant other, you know, like people you are heavily emotionally invested in. I don't feel the surprises, the changes, the news, the information is coming through from significant people. I feel like it's people coming in the periphery of your life that's bringing in a lot of information and you're going to have to decide what you want to do. However, the reassurance card is basically telling me to tell you basically that um, no matter what's happening around you, you've got the love, you've got the support. And you've got like the full, full, not only from friends and family and, and loved ones, but you are, you have some very strong divine protection coming through from your, um, from people that have crossed on, okay, is what I'm feeling. And I got this very strongly when I was shuffling the cards that there is, it's going to be um, an emotional roller coaster of a month. And I do feel the highs are very highs. The lows, I feel it's going to hit one time in this month and it's going to dissipate. It's going to go away because you're going to realize who your friends are. You're going to realize who really loves you and who has always been there. So it's not like you turn around and everyone jumps ship and abandons you. No, you're going to have a lot of love and support. And I mean, it's overflowing love and support. So you're going to feel quite emotional this month. And I definitely feel that, you know, you, you've always like worn your heart on your sleeves in the past. And I feel like this is the month in which you know who has been there to reciprocate for you. So I definitely feel a major, major important milestone that's coming through. Milestones are not always bad. It can be a little bit of an adjustment. I feel like that's what it is. It's, it's an adjustment because once again, we have the tower as the advice and the tower indicates like major changes okay and the major changes are not always bad either major changes to me this card can usually come out when you know someone is moving house when someone is making a major career change when someone is taking on a major major like transition in their life so for example you know um shifting homes getting married moving into another environment where it's very different and you're going to have to make do and you're going to have to make some adjustments. That's what I feel coming through. But more than anything, I definitely can't feel a lot for a lot of you. It is on the financial front. Somebody might be somebody you look up to that you that is your supervisor, someone you admire. I feel like they might be shifting out of a uh, work environment and and they might tell you 
I'm doing this. I love the work, but here's what's really happening behind the scenes. So you're, you're getting some, um, I feel like you're getting some insider information and it might really, you know, it might make you want to jump ship as well is what I'm feeling mainly because you trust this person and they're giving you this information about, you know, who you're working for. And it might, um, it might leave a sour taste in your mouth and you might want to jump ship. You might want to find something else. So I definitely feel major adjustments coming through. Okay. What I'm also feeling here with the tower and the three of pentacles, the three of pentacles is a card about expansion. Okay. So this is like expanding a business, taking on a partnership, taking on clients, but overall it's about honing your skills and expanding your business. It's a part, it's a situation where you are in a position of high status, high authority, and other people are seeking you for your expertise or for your advice. A lot of you might be in a situation where you're expanding physically, expanding the home unit via, you know, children being added into the home environment unexpectedly, for example, with the tower. It could be family members moving in as well or, you know, taking, doing something. Uh, I feel like it deals with contracts. It deals with paperwork and it comes out of the blue. And you're going to have to like think fast on your toes what you need to do, okay? So rather than embodying this energy where, you know, the King of Pentacles is someone who wears their heart on their sleeves, they're very, very ready and willing to offer. And um, they might also be slow, but very deliberate when they actually do something. I feel that the energy here is more conducive for the uh, Knight of Swords, which is more about grabbing opportunities when they come in, being adventurous, being brave, being bold. And whoever is not working, whoever is working at cross purposes with you, it's really important that, you know, you don't need to play nice. You don't need to come in and appease them and do some type of a peace offering. If they are meddlesome, if they are difficult or if they are bringing you down in any way it's really important to you know exercise the energy of this uh, knight of swords it's the fastest moving knight in the deck and it's basically telling you that you know um jump in and rectify a situation and say your piece and especially defend yourself if you have been wronged in a situation okay so i feel like that's that energy is very very important but i i feel like some information coming to light and you're going to know where you stand with very very specific people in your life okay and I don't feel like this is going to be something that is completely unexpected, but I definitely feel there's an element here of, you know, um, sometimes we're looking for information and then when we find out about it, we just wish we hadn't. OK, so that's going to be a little bit of a, an adjustment coming through for this month. And I'm going to do your love reading now. So I hope, you know, this energy is not playing out in the love sector, but something else somewhere else, especially at work. OK, so let's just see what's going on for you, Taurus. Um, I know the other signs, I use a different deck, and I use the Joie de Vivre deck by Paulina Cassidy, but I am traveling right now. My setup is different, as you've noticed, and um, I accidentally left that deck at home, so I'm going to revert back to this deck here. And uh, I'm not going to read reversals. It makes it easier for me to read without the reversals, okay? So let's just see what's in store for you, Taurus. Love Relationships. For the month of August So I'm going to pull out cards to clarify and uh, I'm putting the cards underneath so that we can talk about the main cards that show up before I go into these other ones. So what's going on here? Okay. So 
let me talk about this first because this is a very overwhelmingly, this is the card that jumped out at me. We have here the Four of Wands, and the Four of Wands indicates marriage, engagement, happy home, happy life, okay? So this is basically addition to the home environment, and um, it's traditionally the marriage card. And um, it's funny, I got the same type of cards for uh, Aries as well. And I do shuffle my cards carefully, so I, I got the same energy here. So a lot of you might be in a position where you are very, very emotionally, like, um, either emotionally, in an emotional flux, regarding some type of a commitment, okay, taking a relationship to the next level, committing yourself fully to another person, or joining another person in, in a very important milestone in your life. A lot of you, it's causing a lot of an emotional up and down. At the same time, I feel like there might be some worries about finances, whether or not this person is financially responsible enough for you to join with them in a union. And a union can mean, you know, a serious relationship, a dating relationship, or even taking a relationship to the next level via, you know, engagement, taking a trip together, or um, some type of a taking the relationship to the next level. So I definitely feel there's some hesitation emotional hesitation, where you stand with this person, but also financial considerations entering the relationship. Um, you might not feel financially stable enough in order to get into this union, and it, it might scare you, or you feel that the other person might not have what it takes, okay, what it takes. But I feel like since the pentacles is your energy as an earth sign, I feel like you're the one that might be potentially getting the cold feet, okay? So I definitely feel some um, emotional up and down regarding family, regarding what you want out of relationships, what you want out of marriage, what you want out of child rearing and things like that. And it's causing this emotional flux within you. Whereas you feel like this is what I've always wanted. But I feel like when the moment confronts, when you are confronted by that exact thing, it, you might have to redefine what it is that you want. So I definitely feel some hesitation here. But overall, these two combinations look very, very positive to me. But I definitely feel a lot of you are kind of worried about your financial situation right now. And I would say that it's going to be fine. And I definitely feel as well, housing situation, home life, and marriage situation is heavily supported. But I do sense there's hesitation here. There's like um, almost this anxiousness, but also this... Um, fear of not being able to make it successful okay and I do feel a lot of it is just fears it's not playing out or manifesting in the in real life it's just fears that you have which is causing the hesitation okay at the center of the spread we do have here the ten of wands and the ten of wands indicates a lot of responsibilities that you are that are being imposed upon you for this month. The ten of wands indicates a situation where we are inundated with a lot of responsibilities, and I do feel this could be work preventing you from you know enjoying your dating life, work preventing you from spending time with your partner, um, even family obligations, even like you know external environment, like anything that's coming through interfering you with your ability to be fully mobile to be out and about just a lot of people to see a lot of things that you have to do a lot of responsibilities to take care of that's really preventing you know the the bonding moment between you and a significant other um, it's linked up here with the devil and the two of swords I'm sorry the two of cups now the two of cups is a really beautiful card which indicates as well two people who are it's like a faded union to me. Two people who are very, very much in sync with one another. They know what the other person is thinking and they care about the other person on a very deep soul level. And no matter what, they won't even, you know, want to hurt the other person. So it's a very beautiful card that indicates partnership. And I feel, I feel it's almost like, um, for those of you who are in a relationship, okay, I feel like, for a lot of you, you feel that if someone hurts your partner, they're hurting you. If And your partner likewise feels as if, if someone is hurting my partner, they're hurting me. So there's this one, this energy where I feel like both of you are so in sync with one another. Um, you're so in sync with one another that, you know, you don't want to see your partner hurt. You don't want to see anybody hurt them. And you especially don't want to see them be put in a... Um, bad situations okay 
So you would defend them, you would take on the responsibilities, you would try to take care of everything so that they don't have to deal with um, things that bring them headaches. So, so it indicates to me a very, very strong, profound love for those of you, especially in a relationship, okay? On the other end, what I'm also feeling is there's this sense here, um, and once again, this is going to apply to a small minority. If you find yourself doing all of the work in a relationship, okay, this could be a marriage, this could even be a new relationship. If you find yourself like in a relationship and you feel like, I am very, very much alone, I'm doing everything, I'm planning the dates, I'm planning uh, activities, I am working all the time and the other person is not putting in the effort. And I feel like for a lot of you, um, it might be, you know, the opposite end of this. This two of cups might be the devil where the attraction is so great. And a lot of the times the devil disguises itself as other forms where you feel like you've known the other person forever. But if the relationship is innately very, very one-sided, you are going to have to examine, re-examine, okay? What is keeping me in this relationship? Is it just the physical aspect? Is it just the attraction, the chemistry? Or is there truly a very strong mutual understanding, okay? And if you have the very strong mutual understanding, you need to also understand that on the material, on the physical front in this relationship, are your needs getting taken care of? Or are you the one doing all the work in the relationship? So I definitely some balancing out of expectations and personal responsibility within a relationship is going to be needed for this month. So I definitely feel a lot of you might be in a very, very um, stable relationship. And I feel like one person is possibly working all the time. It's hard for you to meet and you feel very much alone because the other person might be working all the time or the other person might feel alone if you're working all the time. So I definitely feel like, you know, some sitting down, having a conversation, talking about this, trying to move it forward or trying to fix this situation is going to be required of you. Otherwise, the relationship can descend into a lot of hostility and resentment because one person, it seems to me, feels very much alone, okay? In the past position, we do have the magician and the, the moon card. The moon came out first, actually, and the moon does indicate a, a lot of romance, a lot of like a, a psychic bond between two people. Like I mentioned, a lot of you are in a very um, karmic relationship, like a, a soul connect. You have a soul connection with another person. And it almost feels as if, you know, you go to sleep and you think about them or you think about them and then they call you right away. So it, it's a very strong like psychic link with another person. It's also a situation where two people might be very, very different. There might be distance between the two of you. You might be of different, you know, like um, origins is what I'm getting, whatever that means to you. It could be cultural, um, cultural, like uh, uh, differences, ethnic differences, even linguistic differences. But I feel like there's a very strong bond keeping people together. I'm looking at the two pillars in the background, and that usually indicates to me some type of geographical rift spatial distance between the two partners, but they communicate uh, very well with one another, either very late at night, or there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of like um, magic that happens, because I feel like there's the magician here. So I definitely feel a lot of you have met your soulmate, and you're trying to, you know, move things along, you're trying to take things to the next level. And especially you have a very strong sense of responsibility to your partner and they likewise to you. If that's the case, then I definitely feel you are with the right soulmate. And the challenge here is to make sure the relationship is very balanced, okay? Because I feel like one person might live as if he or she is the bachelor. So that could be you or that could be your partner because we have the magician here. The magician is somebody who's, who could be quite domineering. They could be demanding. They are very intelligent. They usually get their way. Whereas the moon energy is somebody who's very receptive, receptive, someone who acquiesces, someone who is very accommodating, is very nurturing, very caring. Okay, And um, 
the moon person might be a little bit passive. Okay, so I feel like if we're looking at both of you in a relationship, you and a significant other, or you and somebody that you like, for example, I feel one person is more of the alpha energy. You know, they know what they want. They're a little bit demanding. They say jump and you, you know, you say how high. And then the other person in the relationship is very passive. Um, not because, not because they're non-confrontational, but because they understand that, you know, um, in order to work well together, we have to compromise. So I feel like both parties have very, very different goals and different ways in which they express love and different ways in which they work well together. So I do feel that a lot of you have, have met a soulmate and you're trying to find a way to work together in a very harmonious light. And that's going to be one of the main challenge I feel coming through. Um, for this month for you and a significant other. It's not about third party interference so much. It's more about how do we're very different people. How do we work together as a unit? Okay. Now in terms of your crowning energy, the crowning energy is something that you are thinking about. Okay. And we have the justice card. Once again, this indicates to me balance. It's not so much about who's right, who's wrong. It's more about like Let's agree to disagree. Let's uh, compromise. Let's uh, find ways to work together harmoniously. So the balance card is something that you are hoping for. You're trying to achieve, and um, I definitely feel you. You want you know stable homes. You want harmonious relationships. You want a partner that won't leave you high and dry. That is as devoted as you are. So I feel like this is um, the month in which you are very sensitive to imbalances in relationships. This is the month in which your eyes are open to, you know, who your friends, your loved ones really are and how you can, you know, um, make a situation a lot smoother, how you can like work smart at mending rifts and broken relationships as well. So if there has been an ongoing argument, I definitely feel that you're trying to get to the bottom of it. And I feel like for a lot of you, you are at a in a at a point where you are willing to compromise to maintain this balance, this harmony in your relationships. It's linked up here with the tower as well as the eight of pentacles. So first interpretation that I'm getting here is seriously your partner might be complaining that you're working all the time. Your partner might be complaining that, you know, I never see you, you're working all the time. And I feel like this is an ongoing problem. This is a recurring problem. They might have told you a few months ago that, you know, you're, you don't have time for me. And you might have shaken it off. I feel because I feel like the tower is like the, the complaint, you know, the, the actual person voicing their opinions. And I feel like you're so caught up in securing that financial foundation that you might not have heated, you know, their, whatever they're saying, you might not have taken into account what they're saying, or you might have dismissed it is what I'm feeling. Um, so it's basically telling you this situation is going to come in again. So if this sounds familiar where you're just like spending a lot of your time taking care of real world responsibilities, taking care of obligations in your life, and you don't make time for your partner. I feel like this is a major, major issue that is coming up for discussion. I do feel it's not going to uh, end in a breakup or a divorce or anything like that. I don't sense that's the case. But I definitely feel like it might lead to a compromise. And I do feel it might lead to a lot drawn out discussion. Okay. What I'm also feeling as well is um, for others of you who might have recently who might have recently been served like divorce papers. I feel like it might have come very unexpectedly, okay? I don't see it happening for this month. I feel like it's already on your mind, so it's something that you have already encountered, which is like you're working all the time. All of a sudden, your partner is like, oh, I'm leaving this relationship because you don't have time for me. So if if it has come up for discussion in the past, I, I want you to just um, be a little bit careful and, you know, really make time to balance out that relationship and to really commit yourself to your partner. It's, um, I'm going to say this, if you feel that some, your significant other or the person you like has already made a complaint that you're working way too much and you're not spending time with them, really try to take that to heart for this month and to do some damage control, okay? Because I feel like that's a major, major problem here. And if you are the type where, you know, 
I know tourists like nice things. You know, you you guys like like top notch uh, restaurants, for example. You enjoy the finer things in life, and a lot of the times you work um, because you love your job. You like the status associated with the job, and you also like the income associated with the status of the job as well. So basically, that means to me is.、Um, Relationships don't work the same way. Okay, you have to nurture it. You can't just throw money at it and and make it grow and make the problems go away. So just be very mindful about that. Okay, I felt like that needed to be said. In terms of what's coming in here, we do have the、um, this is the night. This is the page. Excuse me, the page of、um, Pentacles as well as the Four of Pentacles. The page of Pentacles here is. I feel that's the energy that I mentioned just right now, when I saw this card, and I said that relationships require a lot of nurturing, and it requires a lot of、um, time and effort, and you know, especially consistent effort in order to make something grow. You have to water it every day. You have to change the potting soil. You have to really nurture it. And once again, it is consistent effort, but it's also concerted effort. It takes two people to make something work and to build upon something. So I feel like for those of you who are in stable relationships, one of you is very like open-minded. It's it's very like adventurous. The other person might be very protective of their hearts, especially for those of you in a new partnership, in a brand new relationship, or have started seeing somebody. I feel that you are very busy, and you are getting to know somebody on a very superficial level because you haven't had the time to really get to know them to go on multiple dates. Okay, so I feel like this is the beginning of a relationship where both parties are very, very much on guard. I feel like a lot of you might be seeing a fellow Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and、um, they might be coming in, offering you things like like giving you an offer for dates. But I do sense that a lot of you are very、uh, busy with work. You're very protective about your resources. A lot of you might have recently gotten out of a divorce, and you're trying to get your bearing. You're trying to take care of, you know, yourself, possibly the children, possibly managing mortgage for the two households is what I'm feeling. And you just simply don't have time, even though someone is coming through offering you something. I feel like you're looking at the situation. You're just like, I wish my situation was different. I wish like I could, you know. It's sort of like、um, the answer to that is kind of like, yes, but maybe later. So I, I feel like you're delaying the dating process. You're delaying getting to know another person, even though they seem to me to be very nice, very sincere.、Um, it seems like there's a lot of busy energy that's preventing you from really jumpstarting your dating life. Or really getting to know somebody because you really haven't got the time, or you are just inundated with a lot of work and you're keeping yourself busy.、Um, you're using work as a distraction. It seems almost like, especially for those of you who are single,、um, I feel that you might have been with someone in the past who was pretty much, you know, even though they were with you, they acted like they were single. That's what it feels like to me. And that really hurt you. It really did hurt your self-esteem because I feel like it's not a it, you. So the the person that you were with, they they acted like they were single, and I feel rather than treating it as oh you know it's that one person, they they just don't know how to be in a relationship. I feel like you're internalizing this and you're blaming yourself、uh, as to why that relationship didn't work out. And I'm gonna say this: it has nothing to do with you. It's just that other person was not ready for a relationship. So no matter who they were with, if it's not you, they would have been with somebody else, and they still would have done the same thing to somebody else. You know, pretended like they were single. So I feel like a lot of you are hurt, and you're trying to recover from this, and you're using work to get over the other person. And you've gotten so good at it that you know new opportunities are coming in. But you know, work is now your new normal. So you're like completely married and devoted to your work, and you're not able to like let your guard down. You're not able to accept new opportunities when they come in, and you're not、uh, ready yet to let new people in. So especially for those of you who are single, and especially if this sounds familiar, where you dated somebody, and I keep hearing the words, you were in a relationship with them, but they acted like they were single. If that sounds familiar, and I feel like you have a new offer coming through, 
but your your heart is not um, prepared yet. And I feel like that situation really hurt your self-esteem. And the new person is coming through and you're really afraid of getting hurt again, okay? Um, I do feel another earth sign, possibly another Taurus, a Virgo or a Capricorn. I definitely feel like um, there's a lot of work situation, financial concerns, worries, and things like that. Especially for those of you who are coupled as well because of uh, taking a relationship to the next level, next level of commitment, okay? For others who are recently single, I feel like it might have been a divorce. And you're trying to, you know, divide up assets. You're trying to move between two houses. There's custody. There's alimony. There's child support. All of these things are coming into the picture, kind of weighing you down. And you feel like you can't move forward in the love environment, even though there's new people coming through. And then for others of you, Taurus, without like any type of emotional baggage, who hasn't, you know, dealt with somebody like that in the past, I definitely feel you have some new offers coming through. And I feel like you're still very, very much protective of your heart. You're waiting for the other person to move in and offer you something, okay? So I feel like both of these indicate to me an impasse. One person's waiting for the other person to make a move because they're afraid to show their cards. The other person is like, waiting for you to make a move because they're also afraid so i feel both of you like between the both of the earth energy it's not really going anywhere so you want to take the first move you want to let your guard down and you want to really invite the other person into the fold okay